Hello students, I hope you all had a wonderful Deepavali and also wish you a very happy Children's Day. Now, in this video, we shall study about moving coil galvanometer. Now, on what principle or on what basis is this moving coil galvanometer is going to function? We already studied about when you place a rectangular coil or any coil shaped coil for that matter in a magnetic field it experiences a torque. The magnetic field is produced here which you call it as B and a current I is flowing through that and we know that there are arms P, Q, R, S where in the arm P, Q and R, S a force is acting but QR and PS are either collinear or non-collinear, anti-collinear, anti-parallel because of that it doesn't experience a force. Now let me take a rectangular coil, fine I have taken a rectangular coil, a current is flowing through the rectangular coil. According to Fleming's left hand rule you will find that when this represents the magnetic field, the direction of the index finger and the current is flowing through, you know that the force is acting inward into the board. So this part is going in and similarly the direction is changing, it is coming outward. So it sets up a torque or rotational motion. Hope you understand that, right, a rotational motion is set up. So this is the principle of a moving coil galvanometer. A coil placed in a magnetic field and a current flows through that coil experiences a torque. Now torque, what is the torque formula? Tau is equal to n number of turns n i b a sin theta. Okay, this is the derivation we did where I is the current flowing through B is the magnetic field and A is the area of cross section of the whole coil which you have taken, right and sin theta is the angle. I said to you many times that we set the theta to be 90 degree and so that that sin 90 turns to be 1. That means they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So the formula is Tau is equal to NIBA. That's what we are going to take now. Now, this is setting up a deflecting torque. Okay, it is deflecting. So, let us call this term deflecting torque. Deflecting torque. So, what is the deflecting torque? Tau deflecting is equal to NIBA equation number 1. Fine, how can I make it into a meter, a galvanometer? You know, in the bike and the car, you have speedometer, where as the speed changes, there is an increase, right, and a decrease. Now, that is the same thing here also. Everything where the coil is moving is coil, moving coil galvanometer. That can be used of for different purposes, right. Now, let me show you how is it going to be. Think this is what I have suspended. Now I make it little like this, right? Now you see here. Now, if the, as the coil is rotating, you'll find that the pointer, the pointer is also rotating. Fine. If the pointer goes on rotating like this, what's going to happen? It is just going to go on rotating like this. No, it's not sufficient. It's not good actually. It's not going to help us in any way. For example, if I have a scale. Let us say like this, right, and I have got a scale here, and this is 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let me mark it. And if this is the pointer, it is going to be moving on that, and if this is going to be the coil which I have taken, fine. What should happen? It cannot just go on deflecting like this. It has to come back. It has to be restored back deflect restore deflect restore 
Yes, again I suspend it like this. Let me suspend it like this. Right, now it is rotating. How can I restore it back? Rotate, deflecting and restoring. That can be done by using a small spring. We can connect it in the part here. And this spring has a constant and that is called spring constant. The spring constant. Actually, this is also called torsion constant. You can use the word torsion. How much it can swing. Take for example, a swing is there. You swing it and it will come back. Right? It depends on the rope, the texture of the rope and the strength of the rope. Right? And that is also called torsion constant. Now, what I am doing here, it is deflecting when there is a magnetic field and current is flowing through, a force is acting, a torque is set up and it is rotating, deflecting, deflecting torque is acting. But I restore it back by the restoring torque. Now, what is the restoring torque? That is tau r. That is equal to. It's very simple. It is producing deflection. So, let us say the deflection it produces is phi. Phi is the deflection it produced, and the restoring torque will be proportional to the deflection. It is proportional to the deflection. But I wanted to make it as a equation equal to bring a proportionality constant and that constant k is nothing but torsion constant or spring constant. I hope you understand now, right? Deflecting torque is deflecting and restoring torque is restoring back. So what will happen to the pointer here now? You will find that the deflecting torque when current is flowing through will deflect but the restoring torque will bring it back. Deflect, restore. Right? Deflecting torque is this much and restoring torque is this much. Right? Now, at equilibrium, at a particular point, you know, when it is in at equilibrium, restoring torque and deflecting torque should be equal. Deflecting torque to D is equal to 2R. Yes? Now, from this, I move on further. Right, let me erase this part now. We know the formula for deflecting torque and we know the restoring torque which we have calculated. Fine, and let us make the substitution in this equation. Right, let us see what is to deflecting N I B A is equal to K phi. Phi is the angle of deflection or I wanted to calculate current. So, current is equal to K divided by NBA. NBA, National Basketball Association. I think it is in America. Right? NBA of phi. Okay? So, this is the formula K upon NBA into phi. Or, what are the things here you see? K is a constant, torsion constant, number of tens, uh, strength, turns is also a constant, B, the magnetic field strength is a constant, area of the loop is a constant, so whole thing is a constant, so simply I can say I is proportional to phi, I is proportional to phi, more the current, more the deflection, less the current, less the deflection. This is the working of a moving coil galvanometer. Here we need to consider two more points also. Yes, how we can make this more effective? How can we make the moving coil galvanometer, galvanometer more effective? If you take for example, the magnet to be like this, what will happen at the edge? Edge effects will be there. The magnetic field will not be concentrated. We need to concentrate the whole magnetic field onto the coil. For that, what we do, we are going to put, keep the magnet to be concave shaped like this. Right? See, I am making it concave shaped. North pole and south pole. When I make it concave shape, what will happen? The one which is going like this, is it going to straight like this? The magnetic field lines are going. 
at the edge what will happen you see again it will go like this again it will go like this they all will become radial we use the word radial it will produce a radial magnetic field the magnetic field is focused at the center of it where the coil is being placed <coughs> this will make the turning effect more effective magnetic field is more strong you see magnetic field is more strong second point inside we also place a small iron soft iron core soft iron core also will increase the intensity of the magnetic field it will help in the intensity increasing the intensity of the magnetic field this kind of structure we call it as radial magnetic field or just another thing but theta is 90 degree that we set it so this can be done by a concave shaped magnet and soft iron core we can keep it and that will make it the magnetic field to be radial yes again extension of it we are going to talk about a term called sensitivity sensitivity now what is this sensitivity what is two types of sensitivity you will hear one is current sensitivity another is voltage sensitivity okay now what is current sensitivity current sensitivity for a small deflection for a small deflection how much current has to be supplied that means the deflection should be or other way for a small current how large and deflection i can get here for example this is the scale let us say right and even if i send a small current it will produce maximum deflection that means it is more sensitive right and that can be done now where is that can sensitivity and this factor which you are seeing this factor k upon mba is also a important constant okay this is a important constant which you will be coming across fine see i will just simplify okay you don't need uh, yes current sensitivity current sensitivity is the deflection that means deflection for the particular amount of current phi upon i phi upon i yes that's right phi upon i what is phi upon i r i will just do it in a different way i upon phi is equal to i upon phi is equal to k upon n b a which implies phi upon i is equal to n b a upon k right and this refers to as current sensitivity this is called current sensitivity fine now there is another term voltage sensitivity what is voltage or potential difference current into resistance right our current is equal to voltage upon resistance now voltage sensitivity is phi upon v which is equal to n b a upon k into what is this i into r so just to multiply by r so we can also say that voltage sensitivity is what is this n b a upon k current sensitivity right current sensitivity current sensitivity sensitivity upon k this is also another way of writing voltage sensitivity i hope you get my point yeah there can be numericals based on this concept but it's very simple you just to derive till this and say that i is proportional to phi okay and phi i upon phi you take it k upon nba phi upon i the deflection produced deflection produced for the current that is current sensitivity and deflection again produced for the voltage 
that is called voltage sensitivity so you connect all of them you get the two types of sensitivities in practical when you do it they will ask you in a coil in a moving coil galvanometer it's also called figure of merit this constant is known as figure of merit find the figure of merit of a a uh, moving coil galvanometer using of deflection method which is a practical part which your teacher will do it yes and i hope you understand this whole concept yes and this is the working of a moving coil galvanometer right in the next video we will study how a galvanometer can be converted into a voltmeter and an ammeter thank you